Hey there, traders. Today is All Hallows Eve, otherwise known as Halloween, October 31, and we're back for another E-mini futures market recap. The time is currently, oh, don't have my clock over there. Time is currently 8.03 a.m. We're looking at levels of potential support and resistance in the SPY that we will use for entering trades in the E-minis today. So remember how price got under and closed under that trend line during the last hour of yesterday's open session in the SPY? That seemed to have spurred some more selling overnight. They got down to 575 earlier and might be bouncing a little from there. Current price is around 576.36, as you can see up here. Most of the things I track are in red this morning, but there's no guarantee that it'll stay that way. I'm not going to bring up the IWM chart, but I did notice that on their 60-minute chart, they could be setting up for a bounce from where they are currently. What they do may or may not affect the SPY, but it's something I'm keeping an eye on. There's a CPI data release at 8.30 this morning, but the one I want to be aware of is the PMI data release on Friday morning tomorrow at 10 a.m. because that's usually when I'm either in or thinking about getting into a trade. But for today, we'll just use these levels as our basis for entering trades in the E-mini futures per usual, while paying attention to everything else going on too, of course. If anything looks off or unusual, there is no shame in stepping back and not trading a level. Whatever happens, we'll be back after the closing bell to talk about it. Catch you on the other side. And we're back. It's the next morning. You can see November 1st, 734. That's kind of out of pocket most of yesterday afternoon and evening. So we definitely had a big drop yesterday. So that getting under that trend line was kind of the signal, the clue. So here is what you would have done if you'd played by the rules, which I did not. We'll see my trade. I definitely gave some money back to the market on Friday or on Thursday. Today's Friday. But here's playing by the rules. So first of all, they were above, after, after giving the market 15 minutes to settle in, they were above this level. So 945 is up here. But they had already just come within one penny of what the operating level would be, which would be 574.28. Yeah, it happened before that 15-minute cutoff, but you don't want to ignore that. So anyway, they came down to 574.29, a penny away from this level, and then shot up. So that's kind of the clue I really should have been thinking, and I, I was thinking actually at the time. That probably means something. Maybe I should not take a long trade here, for expecting a bounce higher. I mean, they had already set kind of established in the morning that they were kind of weak. I did buy long there. That was not very smart. But anyway, if you had, like if you're playing by the rules and, and just, you know, not taking into account anything else and you bought here against your better judgment, then you would have had a signal to reverse at seven and a half points out of the money. So it would have been a fumble and you would have followed this thing down for another base hit or more They as they dropped. These little spikes here didn't happen in real time. The E-mini is pretty much smoother. Well, I mean, it just follows this. This spike here did come right up into near the entry point. But it never was in the money at all once if you if you bought a long trade here like I did, which we'll show you. Anyway, if you had bought here against your better judgment, like I said, you would have given some points back to the market, but it wasn't terrible. You could have avoided a bigger disaster. But really, with this type of action here, that was kind of your clue that you had a near miss, albeit a little early, and you should not have bought here. So here's my trades. It's uh, right after 930, and I have a limit order to buy, and I left it on there. Shouldn't have done it, but... You can see me give some money back to the market today as I went along there, got out of the money looking for really more than a base hit, expecting I could just trill this thing up. Thought, well, this was just a big fake out. They're going to go higher today. I was still looking at the IWM at the time, thinking that they had a chance to bounce and maybe the SPY could have some of that energy. It didn't happen, of course. Everything went down. So I jumped out after I had the signal. I gave it some time, a little stubborn on this. So instead of just giving you know, a handful of points back to the market, I gave more than what I would consider my max loss limit. There you go. You missed that, but it was right before $2,500 in the red. So that was over 20 points. And I let this thing go until about 1130 or so. I can just scrub ahead here. And I identified a level farther down, I thought. If they can get all the way down here, that would be really, really good support. I'll buy there. Again, they didn't get that low. And I lost interest, had other things to do. So kind of just had to go lick my wounds and do other things, and I got out, or I stopped this, around 1130 or so. On the daily chart, you can see the damage that was done when they got under this trend line, which was easier to see on the hourly chart when they closed the last hour of the day, as we discussed, and they came down into the 50-period moving average of the daily chart. Um, and this line here at 567.81, that was the line that I had identified in real time on the live trade when we saw that 
thinking if they could come down there, that would be a good place to bounce. I can show you a couple of reasons. Um, and they didn't quite get down there. Easier to see on shorter time frames. The low was 568.44. So this is the daily chart. If we go to 240 minute, then which is four hours, then you can see that they were coming into its two, uh, 100 period moving average. And there's a gap down here, which becomes more clear on maybe an hourly chart. But let's just go, go look at maybe a three hour. Kind of in the middle of nowhere at this point. Here's the gap starting to show up. This is a close that has never been filled before after they got out of it way back here on the 7th of October. And then two-hour chart into its 200 period moving average. So this was going to be good support. But anyway, just showing you why this area at 567.80 or so should or would have been good support at the time. We'll see about today. I've got to do the numbers for today. I'm actually way behind. Just trying to finish this video for Thursday, and I'm going to jump over to the to the uh, numbers for Friday and get that out. And I'm going to go over to the IWM. Everything's down, but they're not as bad, actually. So here, see this hourly consolidation here, or on this hourly chart, you have this big breakup candle. They're coming back down to the bottom of this. Well, at the time they were at the bottom of this, they were right there at the bottom. They were at the 50 period moving average, and the timing was right for them to bounce from this point. So when they gave this thing up, and I mean, there's no contest. They closed the first hour way below and this kept dripping lower. Um, that was off the table. That was where I was talking the other day. Like that could be a bounce there. And if that happened, the SPY might follow suit. You know, all that's history at this point didn't matter, but we look at the SPY in comparison, they look worse than the IWM. Zooming out to a weekly chart because we really don't need this trend line anymore. Not at least not now. So this area right here, which is lower than where they're currently at, Call it around 564 and a half, 566 and a half. I mean, this probably a 15 to 20 point range or zone here in the long picture. And the big picture should be support for bounce higher. But if they break below that, then they might be going back down to test a 20 period or even lower. We have one more day in this week. And so far, they're back up a few more points from where they closed. On the tracking log, here's the play in by the rules log. The seven and a half point fumble at the level, and then a four point reversal, four points on the reversal at the last, the lowest level on the board, nothing below that. What I did, I let the thing go too long and didn't jump out, much less I didn't follow the rules and reverse the thing and take a smaller loss. But anyway, so 24.75, my two contract position put me in the hole $2,400 and some change. So I just, I basically just washed out some, a few days worth of gains. But that's a wrap. I'm going to work on Friday's numbers, get those sent out momentarily. So thanks for watching. Hope you learned something, uh, maybe learned what not to do. Catch you in the next recap video. Have a great rest of your day.